So again, the first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to rewrite this in descending power, descending order. Okay. Now, one thing I told you about completing the square is you can only complete the square when a is equal to 1. We have an issue here because a is equal to negative 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a negative 1 out of just the first two terms. Okay, You can factor out of all the terms, but to make things simple on your life, I prefer to factor it out of the only the first two terms. Does everybody see what I've done so far and be OK with it? Now, now you have an a that's 1 and a b that's 16. So to complete the square, all you're doing is creating a perfect square trinomial. To create a perfect square trinomial, you do b divided by 2 squared. So b, in this case, is 16 divided by 2 and squared. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 squared is 64. So we have to create a perfect square trinomial inside the parentheses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 64 and I'm going to add it inside the parentheses. Do you guys agree by adding 64 inside the parentheses, this is a perfect square trinomial? Yes. It's a perfect square. And again, I'll explain perfect square trinomials. But since you added it, and this is an equation, we have to subtract it. So I have to subtract the 64. But we have to be careful. You really actually didn't add the 64 at all. You added a 64 that is multiplied by a negative 1. So when you subtract a 64, you also have to multiply by a negative 1. So just remember, whenever you factor something out to get a equal to 1, you have to multiply that back. All right? This is a perfect square trinomial because it can be factored down into a binomial squared. x plus 8 squared. You're right. And every single time you guys do completing the square, you're always going to get a binomial squared. Always. So you should be thinking, what is the same number that multiplies to give you 64 but adds to give you 16? And then negative times negative is a positive, so therefore it's plus 74. So now we complete the square. Now it's in vertex form. And it says, ba, 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 describe the graph of each function and support your answer graphically. Well, so all we need to do here is say the vertex is negative 8, 74. And so you could say it's shift left 8 units up. 74 units. And the negative on the outside tells us to reflect the x-axis. It looks something like that with like minimal pacing going on. 